So setting up a building in Costex, adding drawings, rotating the drawings, and um, scaling those drawings to start measurement. So to open up Costex, we double click the Costex icon, or we open it up in our start menu, look for Costex. I'm gonna close down this quick access uh, box here, and I'm gonna open up or start a new building or insert a new building by left clicking the top left hand corner Costex icon and selecting new building. Now I can open an existing building, I can delete a building, I can import or export um, an EXF Costex file, but in this case, I'm gonna select new building. I'm gonna name it warehouse because that's essentially the drawings we're dealing with. And I'm gonna drop it down into a default project. Um, I can set up different projects and drop my new buildings within, the, within those different projects. Um, but in the educational version, I only have the option to select a default project. So <clears throat> in the educational version, I'm gonna select default project and click insert. So this is the Costex interface, looks and feels like um, a Microsoft program, respect to tabs across the top, icons within each different tab. Um, we've got a dimension view and a costing view. For the moment, we're going to work in dimension view um, and then subsequently we'll, we'll use some of our dimensions in a costing view. Um, so the first thing we have to do is add drawings. We can do that in drawings tab or home tab. So in the drawings tab, I'm just gonna select add drawing first item that comes up there and I'm going to go where to where I saved my drawings um, in my case it's in my uh, G directory in a folder called 2d PDF warehouse um, I'm going to add a couple of drawings here the first one I'm going to take in is foundation open click insert if I knew the scale I would select it here but I'm going to check the scale later on so I'm just going to say insert um, again new drawing I am going to select ground floor, first floor plans. Again, select insert. I am going to select um, some elevations. Again, select insert. And I might take four drawings in. I'm going to take a section in. So for the moment, I may add further drawings later on in the tutorial, but for the moment, I have four drawings. Um, this is essentially the drawing name. Um, if I double click in into on the drawing, the drawing properties will come up again. So these are properties would have been what I would have inserted when I opened up the drawing, but I can recall them. Um, again, zooming in and zooming out. Um, I can categorize my drawings. I may find that I have quite a considerable amount of the drawings here and I want to categorize them into different folders. To do that, I'd right click the drawing edit drawing properties and create a folder for my drawing. So in this case, I will say 2D drawings. So once I say update, I'll do the same here. Right click, edit drawing properties. Because I've already written in 2D drawings that should be there are available to me. Update, again, the next one. Right click, edit drawing properties, drop down 2D drawings, update. And then the last one, which is the section. Right click, edit drawing properties, 2D drawings, update. So in this context, I've set up um, a folder called 2D drawings with four drawings. I can collapse that folder. And as I said before, if I had numerous drawings there, I would access to those drawings. So the next thing I have to do, I'm gonna click my first drawing here. It may take a little bit of time to open up. Um, again, navigating the drawing, anyone familiar with CAD, zoom in and zoom out with your mouse wheel, push down on your mouse wheel, move left, move right, up, down. Um, and that functionality is very handy when it comes to measurement by zooming in, zooming out and selecting lines um, <clears throat> to measure your, your, your areas or your lines. Um, Again, the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna rotate that drawing. So I can do it a few different ways. I can right click on a line I wanna rotate. So in the bottom of the drawing, I want this line to essentially be my line. So I'll hover over it, right click, rotate to selected line. Um, and 
and again that has turned the drawing 90 degrees but I want my tiling down on the bottom right so I may adjust that by turning 180 and now my drawing is rotated um, again if I need to rotate a 90 I would do so and I can rotate it around again till my drawing is in the bottom right I can rotate to a drawn line if I right click rotate to a drawn line and then along a selected line I would click and then click again and that would rotate the drawing along that particular line but in this case I'm going to just turn it one 180 or 90 degrees again getting back to the tile drawing tile to the bottom of the uh, or bottom right of the drawing um, in this particular drawing again it can be quite tricky I can only add one scale to a drawing I can't have multiple scales in a drawing um, whereas in this particular sheet I've got a scale of 1 is to 100 and I've also got some details at 1 is to I believe it's 1 is to 50 so if I wanted to use both those um, drawings um, I may have to copy in another drawing and call it maybe foundations dash 2 um, and scale it at 1 is to 50 whereas this one I might have scaled at 1 is to 100 so let's um, essentially uh, check this scale and calibrate this um, I might pick a known dimension in this case I'm gonna measure the distance the drawings tab measure distance a little kind of crosshair will come up I'll select the known dimension I'll hover in I'll left click on one end maybe come back out again and then I'll left click on the other end so I can see that 0 0.042 is not the scale of this drawing um, it's quite possibly should be scaled to 1 is to 100 because of the what's coming up there 0 0.042 but um, the first thing I might do is just calibrate that drawing. So again, in the drawings tab, I'm gonna calibrate the X axis, click that. Something similar again, left click, zoom out a little bit. You can see that the line, I'm gonna bring across and click on the other side of that dimension. Type in the actual dimension, four, two, three, zero, I believe, and click OK. So again, we might check that, measure distance, left click, bring it across, 4228, so it's pretty much um, scaled. Now if I double click on the drawing properties, so select that drawing, double click, I can see that the scale down here has a calibration, or sorry, not the scale, but the calibrated drawing has a calibration factor of 99.97. So I scale that by clicking on lines, but the chances, are, the chances are that scale of that drawing is 1 is to 100, which is essentially the case because it's written down there. But don't, don't always go by what the scale is because it depends on how it was exported, how it was printed, um, and it may not be correct. So it's always good to calibrate it and just double check. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset that calibration. I can't have the calibration and scale it at the same time, so I need to reset it. I'm just going to double click into my foundation plan and I'm going to type in a horizontal scale of 1 is to 100. Click update and now check a known dimension again. Four two, can't really see it there, it's overlaid 4.23 meters. So that would be correct, that's 4,230 millimeters. So um, we're looking for meter lengths here, so it's 4.23 meters, so that's correct. The first floor plans, I'm going to rotate. So I've got the ground floor plan there, and I've got a first floor plan. Um, again, it looks like it's 1 is to 100, because I checked the first one more than likely. That one is also 1 is to 100, that is correct. I can calibrate it again and check a measurement if need be. Um, the elevations, I'm going to click that, turn it um, 90 degrees, get the tile to the bottom right. Um, again, it, it, is, it also is 1 is to 100. Update. And the section, just check that, um, turn it 90 degrees, bottom right, it's showing at a 1 is to 50. 50. So I might just double click my section, type in 1 is to 50. 
and then maybe in this case because it's um, a different scale I might check a oh, vertical dimension there measure distance bring it down and hover over 2.399 so that is 2.4 so I'm happy enough with those drawings they're rotated and their scale and they're ready for takeoff so maybe just in this particular module I'll do a quick takeoff I'll get into it in a little bit more detail in the next video but I'm just going to select my ground floor plans um, again my, my first floor plan in this warehouse and my or sorry my ground floor plan my first floor plan on the same sheet um, and they are scaled and rotated and I'm going to set up a dimension now it does come preloaded in most cases unless you go into costex options and change how what what dimensions are available here when starting a new building um, I have a gross floor area dimension but I'm gonna set up a new one dimensions from drawings to dimensions add dimension group kind of similar to how I added a drawing I'm gonna give it a name of outside wall area and I'm going to put it in a folder um, well actually for the moment I will drop down and leave it in a standard folder but I can set up a new folder I'm going to give it a measurement type area um, I can put a default multiplier in there but most uh, most cases we will leave that the same if I wanted to multiply it by a number of buildings I might multiply it by whoever number of buildings I'm 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 looking for there um, and I can put a default height in I'll get to that we can go back and add that um, I leave the colors as is but I can change them and I'm going to click insert so now I have two dimensions one that was defaulted or preloaded and now my outside wall area so by double clicking on the dimension I can bring back up that dimension group properties okay so again just to finish off this tutorial I'm going to do a quick bit of measurement in dimensions line mode I can either measure in line mode or I can measure in point mode uh, we'll get to the difference between the two um, further on so let me start I'm gonna click on a corner on the on one of the outside lines um, I usually go from kind of corner to corner click again um, and then come down to this corner make sure I'm clicking on the right line um, scroll in click and then come back to my first point click so once I'm happy with that I've returned, I've gone either in a clockwise or an anti-clockwise direction. I can't jump from one side of the drawing to the other. I have to follow essentially the measurement or follow the line. I'm going to hit enter. So there I have it. I've got an outside wall area of 218 meters squared. Um, and if I hover over the area, it'll turn blue and give me the dimensions in that dimension. And I have an area measure of 217.52, obviously rounded up and I've got a length of 59 meters so that's a secondary quantity in costex um, obviously it's calculating the perimeter length of that uh, dimension um, and again if I wanted to double click into my outside wall area in fact I maybe look at the section uh, section of this uh, warehouse and the height of my ground floor is up to my first floor is 2.7 so I'm just going to go back to my ground floor plans where I was taking off the dimensions. I'm going to double click on my outside wall area. And in the default height, I'm going to type in 2.7 meters. Because that's essentially the height of my ground floor to my first floor. And click update. Would I like to apply this new height to all dimensions? Yes, I do. And now when I hover over my dimension, I have a number of different um, secondary quantities. I've got what was originally there, the 217.52. I've also got the length. Now I've got a wall area, which is obviously the length times the height. The height is also available there. And I've also got a volume, which is obviously the area times the height. So there are secondary quantities. Again, if I hover over that particular dimension, I will see those secondary quantities and they are available to me, even though they're essentially not what I measured. Now I can double click on that dimension again and instead of the area if I wanted to see the volume I could click volume and hit update now that volume is displayed there but the secondary quantities are still there so I'm going to just change it back to display area 
and click update. So that is essentially the first video and that is setting up a new building, um, adding some drawings, rotating those drawings, scaling those drawings, either through calibration or through typing in the scale, checking the measurement, that's very important, checking a known distance, and then we did some very basic measurement. Um, so I will see you in the next uh, video. Thank you very much.